good day. I know the heat is much. We're going through very high temperatures. And it is advisable to take a lot of water because the uh, hydration is very high. So learn to take a lot of water, even if it is not your practice. Please learn to take a lot of water to help your body function well because the heat is much. Nevertheless, we are trusting God to bring the rain soon and believe that is your prayer, that is my prayer, that we are going to have rain come to our land so that the agricultural activities can be on, the temperatures can be lowered. And we need to appreciate God by seeing all this. Uh, last time we were here, we were sharing with you on the value of the family, uh, your presenter, Bishop Elisha Dutch, coming to you from the Living Stream Center of Deliverance Church International here at Kawash, Kitsumu, along Kondele, Kibos Road. We normally meet here for our services on Sunday morning at uh, 8 in the morning and then 10.30 in the morning. You're welcome to fellowship with us and your life will never be the same again. Our first service is English only, second service is Swahili and English. And you will be so grateful that you connected with us. You can connect with us on live transmission on Facebook. Our service is normally transmitted online. You can also connect with us on Jesus at Work TV at 11 in the Sunday morning. And at 8 p.m. the program I'm bringing to you now. Right now, I want to remind you of what we learned last week on Monday, same time. We were looking at the family values. We were looking at the family values. We were looking at family values, and we learned a few things. We realized, number one, that there were two things. We read Genesis chapter 2 from verse 18 to 24, and we were able to learn, see two things. Number one, that the, the idea of the family is not man's idea. It was God's creation. It's God who established the family. According to the biblical account in the book of Genesis, the family was God's idea. And according to Genesis, God made man first. After that is God who said, it is not good for man to be alone. God never intended you, my friend, to be alone. Once you have reached marriage age, get married. Unless God calls you to full-time ministry without marriage, a life of celibacy, as we see in other churches, the people God has called to a life of celibacy, that is a different story. But if God is not calling you to a life of celibacy, the Bible says, God said it is not good for man to be alone. So I encourage you, my dear listener, if you are a single lady, you are a mature lady, you need to get married, we trust God. There is a man outside there for you. Don't conclude that there is no man. There is always something good for you. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every perfect and good thing comes from God who gives without partiality. And in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7, the Bible says, Ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened for you. I want you to know you can get married because God is the one who initiated marriage. So we see God he brought marriage. Second thing, he created a woman out of man. That is the second thing we pick from Genesis 2, 18 to 24. So I believe for every man there's a woman for you somewhere. For every lady there is a, a man for you somewhere. Please don't stay single. I can pray for you. You can contact me for prayer. If you're seeking for a life partner, you've waited for one for long and you've not gotten one. My God answers prayers and he answers my prayers. I've prayed for others and God has come through for you. For them, even you, God will come through for you and give you a life partner. And your life will never be the same again. Are you single? You trusting God for a marriage partner? I pray that the Lord will lead you to that man, to that woman that you can share life together with. According to the Genesis account, my friend, there is a man for you, if you are a lady. And if you are a lady, uh, if you are a man, there is a lady for you. Look for her, and you will be happy you got married. We are able to see that the family is very important, and we are able to see something in the book of Proverbs, chapter, chapter 14, verse 26. We are able to see Proverbs 14, 26, and we read what the Bible says in Genesis 1426 the Bible was telling us in the fear of the Lord there's a strong confidence eh? in the fear of the Lord there is a strong confidence 
and his children will take a place of refuge. His children will take a place of refuge. The original version says, reverence for the Lord gives a man deep strength. His children have a place of refuge and security. The family is a place of refuge. The family is a place of security. The family is supposed to offer shelter to the man, to the woman, to the children, and the members of the family. And we need that shelter. We learned that last Monday. We also saw that there are things that can affect a family. We're able to see there are things that can affect a family. And we are able to see that when the Bible says that in the Lord, that his children find refuge and security, what does that mean? Man, you are married. Are your children finding security and refuge in your family? Lady, is your children finding security and refuge in the family? Woman, are you safe in that home? Man, are you safe in that marriage? Because God in his word is very clear. He says refuge. When you look at the word, the, the, his children have a place of refuge and security. The Bible says that God created the family to be a shelter in the storms. And there are many kinds of storms as we saw last time. We were able to see last time that the, one of the storms is the storm of change. The change can come that can affect a family. And change can come in any form. It can be a medical issue. It can be an accident that has maimed somebody, interferes with his life. It can be premature death in the family. It can be loss of a job. Uh, change can come in many ways. It can be delayed to get children. That can also affect the family. It could be a change that is not expected. It could be demotion. It could be moving from another town, moving back to the village because things are not working. So change can affect the family. It can be a real storm. The change is important. Number two, we saw that there is the issue, the storm of failure. The storm of failure. When you fail, you're not the first one. And you're not going to be the last one. And don't think that other people have never failed. No. In fact, people have succeeded much. And people have learned from their failure. They told me when I went to school that experience is the best teacher. But when I went to college, a college professor told me it is not experience that is the best teacher, it is evaluated experience that is the best teacher. Quoting prophet, the pro Professor Howard Hedricks when he was teaching on the law of the teacher. He said that it is evaluated experience that is the best teacher, which means when you fail, you don't stop there. You, re you evaluate, you try to refocus. You reflect, how did it come? How did the failure come? What brought this failure? So you are not supposed to succumb to the storm of failure, but to learn from it and move on. Uh, a, 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 a leadership teacher uh, has written, leadership teacher has written, failing forward. You can't, John Maxwell has written a book, failing forward, and there are powerful things in that book that you can glean to help you in moments of failure. We also saw, that uh, last time we also saw that another storm is a storm of rejection. And this one is happening to so many people today. There are people who are feeling rejected, even their own family. You lost a job and your wife and children behave like they're rejecting you because of that loss. You got a demotion, maybe you went to prison, you came back and things happen. There are a lot of things that we can go through that can bring some kind of rejection. And rejection is very bad. But I pray that, friends, we can learn to withstand the storm of rejection by the help of the Lord, by the grace of the Lord. You can go through the storm of rejection without surrendering, without uh, uh, re resigning, without quitting. When rejection comes, it is a moment of learning. It is a moment of storm. But God gives us the grace to go through the storm. Jesus Christ is the matter, master of the storm. One time he was sailing during the Bible days in the Sea of Galilee. And together with his, the, the, the Bible says he released the disciples to sail. And as they were going, he was sleeping in, the, in the, the part of the ship. And the storm was against them. And they called him, Master, don't you care that we perish? And immediately he woke up, he spoke to the storm and said, Peace, be still. 
Jesus still calms every storm in individual lives. He calms storms in family. He calms storms in a community and a society and even a place of work. Is your place of work going through storm? Call on Jesus. Speak to the storm. Is your family going through a storm? Call on Jesus. He speaks to the storm. He's the master of the storm. The wind obey him. The storms obey him. He can take us through for every storm that we are going through. The storm of change. The storm of failure. The storm of rejection. Friend, you can trust in Jesus. We were able to see last time from the example of character that the family is not a place of growth. We were able to see that the family is a place of growth. We need to grow in our families. We need to grow in our families. And we were able to see the example of Jesus Christ in the book of Luke. We saw how Jesus grew and we saw four faces of this growth. We saw faces, four faces of this growth. We saw that he grew. He grew physically. We saw that he grew spiritually. He grew emotionally. And he was able to navigate this Jesus Christ and intellectual growth. He grew in wisdom, intellectual growth. Jesus also grew in stature, physical growth. He, are you helping the members of your family to grow intellectually? Baba and Mama, help each other to grow intellectually. Help your children to grow intellectually. Jesus grow physically. You must monitor the health of your family. Feed your family well. Feed your family in good diet. Make sure exercises are done. The Bible says bodily exercise uh, profited, but spiritual exercise is of great gain. We need to exercise all these faculties of our lives. So if Jesus grew in wisdom, that is in, uh, intellectually, he grew in stature, that is physical. We also saw that he had favor with God. He had favor with God's spiritual growth. And we also saw that Jesus uh, had favor with man, social growth. You must help your children. You must help your children to grow intellectually. You must help your family members to grow physically. Make sure people are taken to hospital when they are unwell. Or, or do routine medical check. It is good to do a routine medical check once a year. Even if you are not sick, feeling sick, it is important to go for medical check. And uh, gee, we see that he grew in stature. Help your family grow in stature. Do exercise. Jog a little bit in the morning. Take some walk if you have a vehicle. Walk. It is healthy to have a physical uh, body that is healthy, that your body is physically fit. And we saw he had favor with the God. The spiritual growth. Man, you are made of men. You have the, 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 the mind, you have the body, you have the spirit. The spirit man is fed with the word of God. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I encourage you, friend, as a way of review, grow spiritually, identify a spiritual church, belong to a church, have a pastor in your life uh, who can give you spiritual cover, and be, be spiritually active. We are going to learn about this later on as we continue with this series and these teachings. Praise be to God. So I encourage you, friend, have favor with God and have favor with the man. You need to relate with people. We are social beings. You can't be an, alone. Don't disconnect your family with, from other people. Uh, you must know what is going on, how are other people be, uh, be shaping their lives. Uh, so don't just think that you know it all. We are a social beings and we must relate with others. Allow your children to play with other children. Allow your members to interact with other people in the society. This is very important for us. We saw that in the life of Jesus. That is where somehow we stopped. We were able to pick up a reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 38. Isaiah chapter number 38. And we are looking at verse 19. Isaiah 38. And we are looking at verse number 19. And the Bible says in Isaiah 38, 19... One generation makes known your faithfulness to the next. One generation makes known your faithfulness to the next. This is why I'm teaching you about family values. This is why I'm teaching you about having favor with God, growing spiritually, belonging to a spiritual family where you can grow and talk of the faithfulness of God. One generation makes known your faithfulness to the next. Relationship. This leads us to the issue of relationship. Family members need to learn how to relate with each other. 
family members need to learn how to relate with each other, talk with your wife, talk with your husband, don't be quiet on your wife, don't be quiet on your husband, talk to each other, talk to your children, have time to joke as members of a family. They told me that the family that plays together stays together. Learn to have moments of recreation as family members. This is healthy for the family. It builds the relationship among family members. We can do this by learning, by learning to respect each other, by making allowances to differences in the family. To make differences, allow differences to arise. When your wife brings another viewpoint, don't dismiss it. When your husband brings a different opinion, don't dismiss it. When your children make some suggestions, don't dismiss it. Let us allow differences in the family. It is healthy for our growth. It is healthy for our development. Respect your spouse. Respect your wife, my brother. Have some respect and regard for your wife. How do you handle your wife before? For children how do you talk to your husband before children how do you talk to each other before the household learn to respect your wife my brother learn to respect your wife my sister don't talk little of your wife don't be little your wife before your family your brothers and sisters and your parents safeguard your wife don't talk ill of your husband before your siblings before your parents safeguard the integrity of your husband don't expose all the weaknesses of your husband to your relatives. Don't expose all the weaknesses of your wife to your friends. No, my friend, respect your wife. Respect your husband. Respect your children. God teaches us to learn to respect. And we need to inculcate the spirit of respect in our relationship in the family. We must take our children to respect one another. Teach the children to respect one another. Teach the children to respect life. It is in the family where these values are ca captured. Teach your children responsible life. They must learn to respect things and respect life and respect one another. These things must be in introduced in the family. How is it you are my friend in your relationship with your wife? How is it my friend in your relationship with your wife? How is it in your relationship with your husband? How is it in your relationship with your parents-in-law? How is it in your relationship with your brothers and sisters? We need to learn to respect others, respect the views of others, give an allowance for differences in the family, because out of them we learn. Friend, another thing that is important to capture in the family, teach character development. When we see that one generation make known your faithfulness to the next, it is people who have character. Character is important. Someone said that character is what you are when no one is around. Character is what I am when no one is around. How do I behave? Many families are Christians on Sunday and critics of, uh, within the week. There are many people that on Sunday or Saturday or their day they go to church or they go to service. They behave like saints, but the rest of the week they live like anybody else. No, character is important for you. What do I mean by that when I say that character is important? Yes, we love and embrace one another. On Sunday, we greet each other warmly, but at home you never greeted your wife. You never greeted your husband. You didn't even tell your children good morning when they woke up. People just wake up and go on their own. No. Let us develop character in the family. The family is the, the place to develop character. The family is the place to teach character. They told me that children learn what they live, not what they are being told. When you are saying, don't do this, are you doing that? When you are saying, we don't eat this, are you eating that? The children are watching. And friends, we need to develop our character to reflect the image of God the Father, to reflect a godly family. The book of Malachi chapter 2 tells us that he, he made them husband and wife and brought them in a marriage relationship. In Malachi chapter 2, it says, verse 17, he was seeking a godly character. He was looking for a godly seed, a man, children, men and women who reflect the fear of God wherever they are. A loving family and the re within the rest of the week, 
remain loving even in the week. They remain loving even on Sunday. Don't just behave like you are good on Sunday. But when you go at home, you live like the devil. I rebuke that out of your life. Change your attitude the way you handle family members. Change your attitude the way you handle your children. Change your attitude the way you handle your wife. Don't behave like a saint in church, my brother. But when you go home, you don't talk to your wife. Don't behave like a saint, my sister. When you go home, you don't talk to your husband. You don't talk to your mother-in-law. You will hate them with a passion. No! If you are a Christian, you must be a Christian at home. You must be a Christian at work. You must be a Christian 24-7. How is your character when nobody is watching? Are you still a believer? When we talk of values, think of all the things we learn at home about work, sex, time, money. What do we learn? These things we need to learn at home. Playing. God and other people. We learn what is really important to us. Our values. Our values reveal what truly is important to us and our family. Your family is a relay of values. Your family is a relay of values. This is where values are transmitted. Therefore, be a responsible family man. Be a responsible family uh, person. Be parents that transmit positive values to your children. How will your children, should you go home today? Should you die prematurely? Have you introduced values that will shape the life and the future of your children? Or you have left your children to grow like, dog, like wild birds outside there. We need to develop values in our families that will carry our families because values are important. We need to teach values to our, the members of our family. We need to teach values to our children, friend, and this will change the destiny of your family. So I'm, the Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, Chapter number 6, verse 6 to 7. Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse 6 to 7. And I wanted to read this to you, my friend, today about what God says to us as members of our family. He says in verse 6 to 7, uh, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the ways, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall build, you, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them in the doors of your house and in your gates. God is so clear to the children of Israel. And the same applies to us. He is telling us that we know his word, we read his word, we study his word, and once we have done that, we teach the same to our children. I come to you as a family person, and I want to encourage you to teach your family. This leads me to my next topic in my next transmission on the importance of the family altar. I'm going to talk on the importance of the family altar. And this is where God is saying you will teach them in your house. Why don't most families do this? Why don't most families teach values? A family is a place to play. A family is a place to spend time together. Do you spend time with your spouse? Do you spare time with your children? especially when those who are in boarding, when they come back, friend, it is important to spend time with your family members. Eat together, play together, joke together. Don't be too busy for your wife. Don't be too busy for your husband. Spend some time with her. Laugh together. When did you last hug your spouse? Or hugging is strange to you. Just a way of demonstrating your love for him or for her. Do you occasionally hug your children so that you teach them to hug? Yes. Do you play with them? Do you joke around with them? Or your home is a, 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 a barrack, ever serious. 
very serious, not laughing. When somebody is laughing, they are shut down. Everybody is putting a serious face. Where, friend, life is not a rehearsal. This is the real life you have. Joke a little bit. Spare time to play. Spare time to love. Spare time to, to tease one another. And enjoy life together. Let your home be a place that children miss. Do your children miss home? When they are away in school, they want to come home. Does your husband miss home so that from work he wants to come home? Does your wife miss home? So that he, when, when she's through with the issues outside there, she wants to come home. This all takes place in the family. In the book of Proverbs chapter 5 verse 19. Proverbs 5 19, friend. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 5 19. I want you to turn with me Proverbs 5 19. And the Bible says, be happy with your wife and find your joy with the girl you married that is the good news translation it says be happy with your wife and find your joy with the girl you married teach your wife the things you like don't run away because the house is dirty teach your children how your wife how the house to be clean don't run away because the atmosphere in the home is not good madam take good care of the house is the bedroom clean? Is the kitchen clean? How is the sitting room? If it is one room, is it kept in order? Are things in order? Let us be happy with one another. Man, teach your wife. She doesn't know what you want. Teach her. Girl, tell your husband what you love. Teach one another. Be happy with one another. This is the intention of God. And that's why he puts it to us in the book of Proverbs. Be happy with your wife. Some of us are so unhappy with our wives that you felt you would find another one. Friends, try to make her. Try to teach her, pray for her, tell her what you want. Lady, and if you are being taught, pay attention to what your husband is teaching you. Teach one another. Enjoy life with one another. In Kiswahili, walisema, ukiona, vialea, vimeundua. You see another half happy family, they have worked on it. You see another wife somewhere, so the husband, they work together. You see a happy wife somewhere, they work together on their marriage. Work on your wife. Work on your husband. Make your husband happy. Make your wife happy. Work on your children. Make your children happy. Praise be to God. In Proverbs 127, verse 3 to 5, we must know the value of children in the marriage. Don't just think they arrived there. No, they, that, they didn't just arrive there. God brought them. And uh, it is important to know that it is God who gives children. Proverbs 127, and we read verse number 3 to 5. It says, children are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. The family, the family should be a launching pad uh, for ministry. It is a place where children are taught ministry. You may have never thought of your family as being a ministry team together. There is nothing more exciting than having a family that ministers as a team. You can present a song as a family in church. You can make a memory verse as a, as a family in church. Let us know that children is a gift from God. Let us take good care of our children. Make sure your children are healthy and happy. Dress them well. We have seen some family where the lady is immaculately dressed, but the children know. The man is dressed so wonderfully. The children know. Baba, when did you last buy things for your children? Or it is only your wife buying things for them. Let us learn to know that children is a gift from God. Be a responsible father over your children. Be a responsible mother over your children. Don't mistreat your children. Don't mishandle them. Don't make your family miserable because of your attitude towards your husband, your attitude towards your wife, your attitude towards your children. The children are miserable. The father is miserable. The, ma the, father, the mother is miserable. A family of miserable people. Hey, stop it, my friend. Make your family a happy place. The children are a gift from God. And God holds you accountable for the future and the life and the development of those children. Praise be to God. I say praise be to God. In 1 Corinthians 16, 15, we read 1 Corinthians 16, 15. And that's the one I close this with tonight. 
This is the one I close this tonight with so that we learn something about the, the family serving God together. It says, 1 Corinthians 16, 15, Paul writes to the Corinthian church about a man called Stephanas. He says, Stephanas and his family were the first to become Christians in Greece. And they are spending their lives helping and serving Christians everywhere. New Living Translation. Stephanas and his family were the first to become Christians in Greece. And they are spending their lives helping and serving Christians everywhere. What a great goal to have a ministering family. A ministry team in the family. My friend, uh, I want you to know that having done everything else, go to church together with your family. Serve in the church with your family. Encourage your children to be active in the Sunday school or the, the class for children in your church. Uh, you and your wife participate in church. What do you do, man, in your church? Are you doing something or you just go sit here and then you leave? Be actively involved. Lady, what are you doing in your church? Do you just go and sit here and leave? No. How about your children? They can be very useful. Every child you have as a gift, let their gifts be used in church. Family be involved in church. I encourage you to be excited about your church. If you don't have one, look for a church. Friend, look for a church to go to. Don't just say, I will have service at home. I will have the service with the man on the TV. No, the man on the TV can't be your pastor. Have a pastor belong to a congregation. Be accountable in that congregation. Love your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Yes, be a friend to your pastor. Be interested in the welfare of your pastor. Be interested in the welfare of other church members. Don't just come to church and then after church you leave. You greet nobody. You are not in touch with anybody. No. The book of Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, a brother sharpens the countenance of another. You need somebody to rebuke you and tell you, Brother, don't handle your wife like that. You need somebody to tell you, sister, don't handle your husband like that. Don't be so sad. Don't be so close to people. There are things they're seeing that they need to put in order in your life. And that is why we encourage you, be active in church. Identify a church family. Introduce your family members to a church. My brother, don't be the man that sends your wife to children to church and you go to the bar. You go to watch football. You, you go to play a joa. Or, uh, no, 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 no. Go together with them. Carry them together with you. You are the first priest to your family, man. You criticize other pastors. You criticize other priests. How are you as a priest to your family? Can I talk to you? Are you a good priest to your family before you criticize pastors and other priests? Are you introducing your family to church? Are you, you pray for your family? Do you embrace your family members? Do you love them? God values the family. And he wants us to develop values in the family. What values are you developing in your family? Until next time, I want to pray for you. I've reminded you of the importance of relationship in the family, the importance of character development in the family. I've reminded you of the importance of developing positive values in the family. I pray you'll find these things useful. You'll read more in the word of the Lord. You can get in touch with me on the, on the, 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 the phone on the screen for prayer, for counsel, and your life will never be the same again. Lord, I thank you for my listeners and viewers. And now I pray that the families that have watched this program will find it useful. They'll find room for God in their family. The families that have watched this program will begin to develop positive relationship with each other, will be develop positive character in their families, will teach positive values to things, to property, to life, to one another, and to God. If there be anybody that is wanting, Father, touch them and come through for them. Anybody who does not know you, reveal yourself to them, that they would know you and make you their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. And thank you for touching that man, touching that woman, touching that girl or boy, and bringing the joy of family once again to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Till next time. 
This is Bishop Elisha Deutsch, Deliverance Church Car Wash, here behind Gudika Estate, Kisumu City. Amen. Bye-bye.